and welcome into Fantasy Football Live here in week 13. I'm Amanda Borges and I am joined here on set by Andy Behrens and Tank Williams. Hey. Good morning, friend. Look at me in the big chair this week. <laughs> big boy seat over here. Big boy seat. Yeah. Brad not currently allowed to leave the state of Colorado. Uh, I hope that gets resolved real soon. <laughs> <laughs> we will say hi to Brad. He is with us. Don't worry. We'll say hi to him very, very soon. But first, we want to say hi to Liz Loza and Matt Harmon who are with us in our LA studio this morning. Good morning, guys. What's buzzing? Are we still like obligated to do some sort of like Thanksgiving related banter or is that is that time? <laughs> I mean, if up? you have something to be thankful for, then shout it out, man. Every day should be Thanksgiving except for the turkey and the pumpkin pie, right? Yeah, I mean, if I never see another plate of stuffing again for, you know, 365 days, I'm pretty content with well, that. Well, that's something to be thankful for then. There we go. Look, look at the positivity just raining down on us. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. I appreciate it. Well, frankly, I needed that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. We also have our DJ Bebop Rocksteady and his original. Hey. Group. They are back in studio this week. What's, yeah. What's up? Uh, Thanksgiving was what almost three days ago, and I'm still full. So that's the stuff. Eating Thanksgiving leftovers. Shout out to green bean casserole. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and finally, joining us from snowy Colorado, Brad Evans. Brad, good morning. Uh, you are keeping an eye on the weather for us this morning, right? Yes, that is correct. And keep an eye on my ankle as well because I have a bracelet attached to it. That's why I cannot leave my basement, which is not my mom's. This is my house, but my mom's Totina's pizza rolls are something to die for. But we got a lot of weather to break down here uh, in fantasy land. There are people, you know, with their finger hovering above the panic button and unnecessarily so. Let's go ahead and start off in New York. Let's talk about the Packers and the New York Giants. Of course, this game being played 
at MetLife Stadium in Jersey. Uh, some wintry precipitation, a mixed bag of sorts, some sleet, some snow, some freezing drizzle expected during the course of the game, but not enough to really accumulate on the ground to really impact this game as a whole, and there is expected to be light wind. So I'm not downgrading Aaron Rodgers or anybody else associated with him or Daniel Jones in this particular contest. Meanwhile, Tampa Bay and Jacksonville. We have some breezy conditions expected there. Looks like the rain's going to hold off for much of this game. Probably going to come uh, after the game has concluded. But sustained winds anywhere between 14 and 18 miles per hour expected in northeast Florida with occasional gusts reaching close to 30 miles per hour. Again, not enough here to really say, all right, I got to panic. I got to pull out Nick Foles, who I wanted to stream this week and insert option B. So I stay the course with everybody associated here in the vertical options with Jacksonville and Tampa Bay and start them with the utmost confidence. Same applies with Oakland, Kansas City. Very similar scenario there, but the temperatures, of course, much colder in the heartland of the country as you're going to have sustained winds in that 14 to 18 mile per hour range with occasional gusts reaching 30 miles per hour. But again, I'm staying with all of my primary guys that are in this contest related to the vertical passing attacks on either side of the ledger. And the same uh, approach here applies to the Jets in Cincinnati. Could have some precip, some light rain in the second half of that game, but I'm not expecting anything to really downgrade across the board. Then finally to San Francisco and Baltimore. Rain expected, light to, uh, to moderate to occasionally heavy at times. Throughout the course of this contest, could be a bit of a pig slop fest there in Baltimore, but winds not expected to be gusty in nature at all. So you are not sitting down Lamar Jackson at all. You are playing him with the utmost confidence along with everybody else again <coughs> on either side of the ball in that game. Tis the season for gross weather. Thank you very much, Brad. Remember, yep. this show is all about you. So if you need help with your roster, you can find us at Yahoo Fantasy on Twitter. Just use the hashtag AskFFL. Matt and Liz will be keeping an eye on all of that all morning long. And also Scott Pianowski is answering questions live on Twitter. You can also call into our show. The number is 877-FFL-GURU. We will get to as many questions as we can throughout the show. Before we get into breaking down week 13, let's see who's in and who's out today. Eagles tight end Zach Ertz will give it a go despite a hamstring injury. His teammate Alshon Jeffrey will return playing for the first time since week nine. 49ers running back Matt Breida will miss today's big showdown in Baltimore. The Niners want to make sure he's fully healthy for next week's game against the Saints. And in the late afternoon, Kyler Murray is listed as questionable, but he is expected to play against the Rams. Anything stick out to us there? Uh, we had conflicting reports on oh. uh, Brita's availability okay. uh, early this morning, so he's not going to be good to go. That's a that's a bummer. One less weapon for San Francisco in a in a really fun game. Mm -hmm. Big game. We'll get to that later as well. All right, let's kick things off with our fantasy freebies for the week. So these are players who are under 25% owned in Yahoo leagues, but they should have a big week. So we'll start with you, Tank. Who you got? Uh, I'm going with Jared Goff because. I mean, it's just like this. It's like, you remember Mike Tyson's punch out? Like, whenever <laughs> Lil Mac went up against Glass Joe, you knew he was going to knock him out. But then when he went up against Mike Tyson, he was going to get knocked out. Where well, Arizona gives up the most fantasy points to quarterbacks, and they've given up the most passing touchdowns. And so I feel like if you're going to play Jared Goff, now it's going to be the time. Otherwise, you need to go ahead and just keep him on the pine. So Jared Goff, roll him out. All right, Brad? Man, I like the Mike Tyson punch out reference there, but come on, dude. Jared Golf <laughs> is the Sandman. He's putting everybody to sleep, including all those around him. Uh, look, I'm going to go with Nick Foles here. The giant Q-tip is going to clean out the competition this week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Again, I mentioned the weather. It's not going to play that major of a role in this game. Do not be deterred, but be supported by the matchup here. The Buccaneers have allowed 305.5 pass yards per game, 2.4 passing touchdowns per contest, and 8.8 ADOT, which stands for average depth of targets. That's tops in the league in terms of Highest number allowed, uh, or one of them anyway, and the second most fancy points also given up to the position. Also uh, surrendered a ton of air yards. I I've got Foles close to 300 yards. I think it's going to be a two to three touchdown game. I've got him stacked everywhere with D.D. Westbrook and D.J. Chark. It is going to be a meaningful week 13 for one, Nick Foles. Andy, who's your guy? 
First of all, if we're calling anyone the giant Q-tip, how is it not Mike Glennon? Who is Touché. more Q-tip? Touche. Like, yeah. uh, He's the mozzarella agreed. stick, Baron. Okay, I'll oh. take it. I'll accept that. <laughs> yeah. uh, my guy, you heard Tank talk about Jared Goff. I'm going to go with his primary tight end. That's Tyler Higby. Uh, Tyler Higby this week, uh, first of all, last two games, he's played over 70% of the snaps for that team. No Gerald Everett in this one. Higby coming off a game in which he saw six targets, so volume is going to be there. And who is the opponent? Yes. It is the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> Preach, Rev. Not only have they allowed the most fantasy points on the season to the tight end position, they have given up the most receptions to tight end, 72. Well, the most receiving yards, over well, 870, and the most touchdowns, a dozen touchdowns to the tight end position already. Higby is going to find the end zone giving you a personal guarantee. And let the church say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> With that, let's get a check of our social channels. Liz and Matt handle all of that for us. Hey guys, what's going on? Yeah, first question we have here is a quarterback one. We, it comes in from Twitter. Tommy on Twitter asks us, need help. Lamar Jackson or Russell Wilson uh, with a good amount of emojis here too, which you cannot see on the screen. So good job by me. Uh, who do you like better, Liz, in this week's game, uh, Lamar Jackson or Russell Wilson? Well, these are two seemingly tough matchups, but I don't think you can sit Lamar Jackson right now. And while the 49ers D-line has been absolutely ferocious, two quarterbacks that gave him some trouble, Kyler Murray and Russell Wilson. And what do those two quarterbacks have in common? They are explosive rushers. And what is Lamar Jackson? The best and most explosive rusher in terms of a quarterback. So I think you're playing Lamar. I, I think when you look at this great matchup, obviously, between these two teams, like both of them are great units. The Ravens offense is great. The 49ers defense is great. But I think one is unique and different and sort of this outside of expectations uh, behemoth. And that's the Ravens offense. So I'm giving them the advantage here. I think you go with Lamar Jackson, almost no question. Now, our question from the chat, too, and remember, people, in the chat room, we are paying attention to you. If you use emojis, that's a good way to uh, to catch our attention. Also, if you're funny, you say something interesting, like our friend Chad did here. He says he needs a Christmas miracle to get into the playoffs. We're, we're switching the holiday seasons now. We're on to Christmas. We're pivoting to Christmas. Holiday lights went up on Black Friday, right? Everybody put their tree up the day after Thanksgiving, except for you, Home Depot. I definitely have not even given that a second Neither of thought. Of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they are asking, they need a Christmas miracle here, and it's between Saquon Barkley or Miles Sanders. I've been getting a lot of Miles Sanders questions this week. And I'm imagining that's partially because uh, Tug Peterson said he was going to see a lot. He was going to use Miles Sanders a lot. We should expect to see a lot of Miles Sanders with Jordan Howard, obviously, hobbled again this week. That's cool, and I know Saquon Barkley's obviously not looking like he did. I think that high ankle sprain is more of an issue than perhaps uh, they were letting on. But And both of these uh, matchups are good for the running back position, but I am still going to give the edge to Saquon Barkley because there aren't any receivers, and we know that he is uh, that his passing game floor obviously makes the whole thing better for him. So I, I completely agree with you here. I, I've been in a believe it when I see it, mode with Miles Sanders in this workhorse uh, role that I've been hoping for since August, but frankly, uh, I don't think we're going to see it in this game. Um, again, believe it when you see it. I think I go with Barkley here in a very good matchup as well, so even that, while you'd give that edge on the Dolphins side there to, to Miles Sanders, I don't think it's that big of a difference. Going with Saquon against the Packers defense. So we'll be paying attention to you all show. Keep popping in the chat room. I've got my eyes right over here on you guys, ready to answer your questions. Thank you, guys. As he said, keep those questions coming. We'll also check in on the phone lines a little bit later. It's time now for the Fantasy Recipe for Success, brought to you by KFC's Nashville Hot Chicken and Waffles, the perfect Ooh. combination. Mm. Now, these are quarterback-wide receiver combos who are sure to light up the scoreboard for your fantasy squads and in DFS this week. So we'll start here in studio. Andy, who do you like? I'm going to go with Sam Darnold and Robbie Anderson. Love this pairing. First of all, in Yahoo's Daily Game, they're only $40 combined. 28 bucks for Darnold, only $12 for Robbie Anderson. Anderson has found the end zone in back-to-back -back games. Sam Darnold, over his last three, has nine combined touchdowns. Seven passing, two rushing. He's been really good. One thing we've learned about Darnold, he can crush a favorable matchup. And wow, is that what he has this week? He gets Cincinnati. The Bengals defense on the season allowing nine yards per pass attempt. That's nearly a first down every time you throw the ball against them. It's a great spot for him. I think these two are going to go off. Tank? Well, I'm going with Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. I mean, obviously, we saw them get smacked in prime time last week, but 
You remember when Kirk Cousins, everybody was on his neck, and then what did he do? He went to the Meadowlands and then got it popping against the Giants, and he's been balling out ever since. And so the Giants defense gives up the second most points to fantasy wide receivers, the tenth most to fantasy quarterbacks. So if that ain't a recipe for a bounce back for a Rod and Devontae Adams, I do not know what is. Mm, Liz and Matt, who are your stacks of the week? Yeah, I'll take this one first, and uh, I'm going to go with Carolina Panthers stack here. I've been a little hard on Kyle Allen lately because I think he's showing his flaws as a franchise quarterback type of guy, but I think when you look at him, he's really good when he doesn't get pressured. When he's under pressure, he has just a 40% accuracy rate according to sports info solutions that ranks 30th out of 32 primary starting quarterbacks so i think this is a really good spot against washington who's one of the worst teams at getting pressure ranking 29th in total pressure so far this year and obviously if you're pairing kyle allen with anyone it has to be with dj moore who's just been on fire of late since week nine he has 45 targets which leads all wide receivers so i think that makes for a perfect stack and a very good matchup against that trash can team in Washington. <laughs> well, I like that one, but I think I'm going to go with Patrick Mahomes because as much as we love Lamar Jackson, you know, Mahomes is still pretty good. He's averaging the fourth most fantasy points per game, and he is in an absolutely gettable matchup against these Oakland Raiders who basically have a sieve as their secondary, but Patrick Mahomes is $38. He's the most expensive quarterback on our board, so what do you do? How do you afford a stack? You throw in McCole Hardman, who's only $15. He is basically this year's Will Fuller, a player with an insanely high ceiling that doesn't need a ton of snaps to make big plays. I like that stack, and I like the projected point total in this game as well. Thank you very much, everyone. Don't forget to try Nashville hot chicken and waffles at your local KFC restaurant. It is time now for our first quick slant of the day. The Ravens host the 10 and 1 49ers in a must watch affair in the early slate of games today. Now this is arguably the biggest test for San Francisco and for Baltimore. Lamar Jackson is having himself a record breaking season. <laughs> now, uh, not so fun news though. This game will also see some yucky weather. So what are we expecting in this one guys? Yeah. Yeah, first of all, game of the day, one of the games of the season yeah. so far. Super excited for this. It is the NFL's number one defense in terms of yards against San Francisco, against the NFL's number one offense. Uh, this is going to be great. Uh, let's start with Brad, actually. Brad, you've got Lamar Jackson still ranked as your QB2 this week, even though they're facing a Niners defense that allows the second fewest fantasy points in the position. There's no benching him. Uh, how do you feel about his weapons? Yeah, I mean, I get a lot of questions about Hollywood Brown in particular coming off that multi-TD performance. Uh, I'm down on him in particular in this game. Uh, I know San Francisco's done a masterful job also containing the tight end. And Mark Andrews, you know, this is the most difficult matchup on paper as the Niners are number one in fewest fantasy points allowed to the tight end position. But, look, I, I, the reason why I like Lamar Jackson so much is his uh, obvious rushing ability. I mean, last week there were people fearful because the Aaron Donald matchup. Oh, God, there's no way you can go out there and you know, run for even 60 yards and a touch and he went for like 95 and one given the conditions there yeah you have to kind of reduce his output through the air maybe like 200 and a passing touchdown but 70 rushing and another rushing td entirely doable for him he's just superhuman right now and is the clear uh, front runner not only for league mvp but arguably for fantasy mvp as well yeah yeah no question about it uh tank last four games the Ravens have allowed one touchdown to an opposing wide receiver. They've allowed two touchdowns to opposing running backs. Um, they're just not giving up a thing. That secondary is healthy. Anything that you're willing to start on the San Francisco side. I mean, it's going to be sloppy. You know they're going to try to be dedicated to the run. So, I mean, I guess, you know, Tevin Coleman, but there's going to be that mixture between him. It's going to be most of it. It's going to be Wilson near the goal line. And then also I look at as wide receivers, they've had, like, some success against Baltimore. So, I mean, at least... If they're trying to play catch up against Lamar, Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, I like that call. Uh, for me, it's Kittle. Sit the rest of your Niners. Of course wow, it's Kittle. shocking. <laughs> shocking. Uh, don't forget, we mentioned it earlier, Matt Breida is out. So do not forget that. All right, it's time for our first commercial break. When we return, we'll check in with our reliable friend, Nate Boyer, and some fantasy flex options. Don't go anywhere.
we're back here on Fantasy Football Live with our good friend and former Army Green Beret, Nate Boyer. First off, Nate, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I did. It is awesome to have you here in studio. I don't know if this is a tough subject, but I want to ask how your fantasy squad is doing. It's very tough. It's, it's tough? Very, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> because it's like every week it's, it's a one-point loss, it feels like. And I've got... I've got a team of fighters, okay. and they're doing what they can, you know, yeah. and I'm trying to get them rallied up. Yeah. But it's, not it's like my top guys, my names, my name, my stars mm -hmm. are just not performing. You know, poor, I love Amari Cooper. He had a rough one a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it just, uh, zero points, nothing. I mean, I just needed, I needed one catch, and I, that one catch that got overturned would have won the game for me, so it was tough. You know, I'd feel bad for you, but I'm way worse off than you are, so we're just gonna move on. And we're still eight and four. Okay. We're good. Okay, good. We're tied for third All right. in the fight. Well, we, we'll see if you can turn it around in week 13. That's right. Fantasy owners are always looking for the most dependable option to help them week to week, so it is time to decide which flex options are made of reliability. Presented by USAA, who helped their members achieve a better tomorrow. Now, these players are made to help you this week. And Nate, we'll start with your first pick, and it is a running back right. coming off a career-high seven catches. Tell us about him. Well, he broke my heart when I was in college. Oh. I went to the University of Texas. Jamal Williams played for BYU. And 2013, Mac Brown's last year coaching, uh, we got run through by BYU. Taysom Hill had 265 yards, and this guy named Jamal Williams, who I'd never heard of, who a lot of people had never heard of, ran for 182. So we just got absolutely torched uh, out in Utah, and it was ugly, but you know, the guy, I've followed him since then, and he is made a reliability. He's the RB2 for Green Bay. Like you said, seven catches last week. He gets a lot of targets out of the backfield. He scored five touchdowns receiving this year, also ran one in. They're playing the Giants, who aren't great against either the run or the pass. Mm -hmm. I just think he's going to have a big game. I think they're going to use him a lot. They're going to be ahead. You know, they're going to uh, be re resting Aaron Jones. And I just have a feeling he's going to put put one in the end zone. He's going to score. All right. We'll see. Well, you have another reliable flex option. And this is a receiver who's hoping to find just a little bit of room against the Bucks secondary in week 13. Yeah. And he also destroyed my Texas Longhorns. He's so going back to it Texas, all goes back. right? D.D. Westbrook went to OU. <laughs> Baker Mayfield threw him the ball uh, 10 times, I believe, his senior year. Mm -hmm. 232 yards, which is an Oklahoma record. So I'm going with all the heartbreaks this week. My stomach hurts from Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and now my heart hurts. But Didi's going to have a big game. He's only had one touchdown this year, early in the season. I think the first game of the year, actually. Uh, but he's getting a lot of targets. Coming off injury the last couple weeks, he's getting a lot of yards. Uh, they're playing Tampa Bay, who is the worst pass defense in the NFL. Yep. And like I said, I think he's also going to score. I think he's going to score twice. Ooh. I think that's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hot take. All right. So Didi. Two touchdowns for Didi. Love it. Thank that's you right. so much, hey, Nate. Thank I appreciate you. it. This was all brought to you by USAA, proud supporter of the military community. What you're made of, we're made for. All right, it's time now to check back in on our social channels with Liz and Matt down in Southern California. Hey guys, take it away. I gotta admit, I miss having Nate here. It was, it yeah. was, it was fun. Um, but let's pop right into our chat room. Sure. Because there's a lot of people, as you said when we were, uh, just sitting here earlier. It, this is the playoff push. Just people people need to get into uh, the playoffs. And one question that I've been getting all week is what to do with Deshaun Watson. And mm. Savage something or another on Twitter says, <laughs> I can't remember all these letters and things that you people put in there. Savage and a bunch of numbers. Exactly. Deshaun Watson or Nick Foles? I had a friend ask me this question too, and I'll be honest with you. I went with Deshaun Watson. Yeah. And here's, here. well, okay, yeah. so you're, you're confident there. I, yeah. I like that because for me, it's... Look, there are whispers that a coaching change is inevitable in Jacksonville. This sure. is a team kind of in full-on evaluation mode. I don't think it's totally out of the range of possibility. Nick Foles makes a couple mistakes. He sees the bench in this one for Gardner Minshew as a team kind of looks to the future. Well, I think most people are looking at the matchup against Tampa Bay, of which course. is super generous to the quarterback position. The opposite of that is obviously New England because their defense, as Tom Brady has pointed out on more than one occasion, is the best part of their team overall along with special teams. But... The thing for me that makes me like Deshaun Watson is the availability and return of Will Fuller, who 
As I mentioned, McCole Hardman in the last segment is one of those high ceiling players who just went off and healthy for over 100 yards last week. I don't think you can ever count him out. That extra weapon to me makes Deshaun Watson, gives Deshaun Watson rather the edge in this uh, decision between he and Foles. And also Brad mentioned the weather, come on. Yeah, the weather, and also too, I think back to a few weeks ago when uh, Lamar Jackson was playing these Patriots, and I think everyone on the show yapped about the fact that, oh, it's a mobile quarterback against a defense that plays a lot of man coverage. Lamar goes out and has a good game against him. I could see Deshaun Watson, who's also quite mobile, doing the same thing here. So I'm still playing Deshaun Watson if you have him with some confidence, especially over a streamer like Foles, who has been a little tough to trust so far. Now, John from Facebook wants to know, we've got Miles Sanders versus Jonathan Williams here. Jonathan Williams had one of the best running back roles uh, of anyone in week 12. I mean, it's happening. A couple years later than we anticipated, but well, wow, talk about a post-post hype sleeper. Yeah, a post-post-post hype sleeper <laughs> at this point. Um, so who do you like better in this debate here? Uh, I'm going to go with Miles Sanders okay. in this one. I think the matchup leans more in Sanders' favor. And while we have been waiting for Doug Peterson to finally give the reins to Sanders, I don't know if it's going to happen, but I do think he will outproduce Jonathan Williams in this one. Again, I mean, the best thing that uh, that the Tennessee defense does is stop the run. Yeah, it's not the tastiest matchup for Williams, but I see this being a close game. Both these teams kind of going back and forth, you know, keeping the score relatively low. And for that reason, I really like Jonathan Williams. Just that workhorse role. So you like him more has. because of the volume. Yeah, the volume I think I can trust much more, especially if you need this to get into the postseason. I think I'm going to go down with a guy that you know, has a lot of volume coming his way. So to me, that's the way to go here. Let's take one more. And I like this question a lot from Syed uh, from Facebook. Sterling Shepard, Josh Gordon, Ugh. Sammy Watkins, or A.J. Brown? They need just one, and they gave us plenty of Christmas trees, snowmen, and a football. How topical. Um, I, they need just this one is a good. This is a good question. It's a tough question. I think it's, it's a kind, good question. I think it's kind of easy. You think it's easy? I'm going to go Sterling, Sterling Shepard here sure. because... You know, of the people that are missing in the New York passing game, Golden Tate, Evan Ingram. I know Sterling Shepard is sometimes tough to trust, especially because he's to catch a passes from Daniel Jones and ugh, uh, but Well, I think having gold, so I think that Sterling Shepard is a better inside receiver. He's yep. better out of the slot than he Agreed. is outside and Golden Tate's absence therefore means that probably there's going to be more Sterling Shepard in the slot, which he does better than as an outside receiver. So I do like that call. AJ Brown is interesting just because yeah. whew, he is looking better and better and man does he play big. He breaks all the tackles and he certainly surpassed Corey Davis on this roster. Yeah, I mean, you remember 100 years ago back when we were in Nashville gushing about the potential <laughs> for him this to actually happen what what is happening right now, which is AJ Brown is the best wide receiver on this roster. I think we both said that it wouldn't surprise us at the end of the season if AJ Brown led the team in targets, and I don't know if that's going to happen quite yet, but to me that's the number 2 option, but I still think Sterling Shepard has the safer floor. We are we're in lockstep back then, Liz, with our AJ Brown taking we're in lockstep now with Sterling Shepard. So, keep the questions coming in the chat room, use those emojis make some funny jokes. I don't know. Just there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of like alarm emojis Outside over of the there. Outside of the fantasy championship, what are you wishing for for Christmas? Yeah. Give us some gift thoughts. I mean, we are like I fantasy need, Santas. I need gift thoughts so bad. I'm the worst gift giver on the planet. <laughs> we'll help you out, Matt. Don't worry. Time now for Shootout or Shutdown with Andy Tank and Brad. This is where we go over the high and low Vegas point totals for a couple games. And we start with the Raiders and the Chiefs. Yeah, let's start with the fun one. Uh, so the number in this game that I most recently saw was 50 and a half. Uh, I'll start with you, Tank. Josh Jacobs. Uh, can the Raiders keep this game competitive long enough for Josh Jacobs to go off against a defense that allows the most fantasy points to running backs? Well, the Raiders' only path to victory is if they can get Josh Jacobs going. We've seen that. That's the way that the Indianapolis Colts went into Kansas City, and they got to win. And so if they can establish that run game and Gruden is stubborn, he's going to probably stick to it. But if not, I mean, honestly, Let's be real. The Chiefs are coming off a bye. They about to come in and smack the hell out of the Raiders. Yes. So, I mean, that's what's going to happen. So, I think that the game flow is just going to be out of Josh Jacobs' hands. Yeah, I feel like uh, the Chiefs are going to get to 50 maybe on their own yeah. in this one, especially after the way the Raiders just looked against uh, New York. Brad, uh, talk to us about the Chiefs' running game. No, no Damian Williams this week. He's got that rib malfunction. Uh, it's going to be Daryl Williams and LaShawn McCoy. Who you got? Yeah, I think uh, these guys are going to be really equals in, in my estimation. I think both are going to get it right around 12 to 14 touches in this contest. I think both are viable back in RB2s or at least flexy, sexy options in 12-team and deeper leagues. Uh, I think they both can find the end zone 
As you guys mentioned, I mean, the Chiefs are favored by 11 at most locations. And if the winds do whip up at times, maybe there will be a point of emphasis in the second half, holding one of the clock with this one-two combination punch. So, and we also got to look at the Raiders, man. I, I mean, we talked about it earlier on the Chicago radio show, Barons, about how this Raiders front has really come uh, unspooled yeah. in the trenches. They've allowed the 11th most fantasy points and 4.3 yards per carry the running back position the last five weeks. So, yeah, I, I mean, if I had to decide on the pecking order, I'd probably go McCoy slightly over Williams. But again, I think they're very similar in terms of their overall upside today. Doesn't Noy seem much more believable with a pop collar? He does. I mean, that's just my thought. <laughs> I don't know. Does. Yeah. He does. That's, that's a good That's all it takes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Chargers and Broncos. Uh, yeah, I got. I guess we Don't gotta get through so this excited. one. <laughs> we've got we've got Drew Locke making oh. his debut. I'm, I'm excited about that because I have the Chargers defense. I scooped them up in a couple of places. Uh, I think they're probably gonna score 20 fantasy points on their own this week. Uh, expectations? For I Drew think Locke? they're gonna be conservative, man. I think it's gonna yeah. be a big Philip Lindsay day, and he has a decent matchup against the Chargers uh, defense, and so I expect them to go with him heavily. And if you're gonna play somebody as a pass catcher on on the Denver side. Young quarterbacks like to lean on tight ends, so Noah Fant or Cortland Sutton has been a target monster, and that probably continue with Locke as well. Yeah. What is Locke? I think I think you're right about Philip Lindsay. That workload has definitely tilted his way. Uh, Brad's guy, Royce Freeman, not really getting the burn lately. Uh, Brad, what are the chances that we see Tyrod Taylor this week? Uh, what are the chances oh. Philip Rivers uh, doesn't make it to the end of this one? Uh, I think significant. I mean, we're hearing the rumors out there coming off the wire. There are a couple of reports uh, circulating that uh, if Rivers goes out and lays uh, an enormous size egg in the first half of this game, we could get uh, some tie rod time after halftime. So uh, that is a card very much in play. So Rivers very risky. I think Keenan Allen also risky based on that potential downside and also the one-on-one -on -one matchup with Chris Harris. I think really the safest player here, two of them, Melvin Gordon, uh, obviously must start material against this Denver front in my estimation, and Austin Eckler, who remember the last time uh, that he faced the Denver Broncos, he caught 15 balls. Yeah. He's the best pass catching running back in the league. I think at a minimum, you're gonna see seven to eight receptions from him, whether it's delivered by the hand of Philly Rivers or Tyrod. All right, thank you very much, everyone. All right, there are players who are owned in more than 50% of Yahoo leagues, but they might not get you as many points as you may think. So this is where we get to our off their game players, and we'll send it down to Southern California to Liz and Matt. Now, Liz, you think a 49ers running back could be off their game this week? I do. I mean, Tevin Coleman has not looked good for four weeks straight. Yeah, he scored in week 12, but he's at, he's. I don't think he's posted more than 41 rushing yards for four consecutive efforts, also averaging less than 3.6 yards per carry. I like this a little bit more when Matt Burita was going to play because I thought he could maybe uh, uh, like capitalize on an opportunity here, but also the, the matchup isn't great for Coleman either. The Ravens are allowing the third fewest rushing yards per game, so I think that Tevin Coleman is someone you need to manage your expectations on I think that's really fair and frankly I think I'm gonna manage my expectations on Leonard Fournette as well I mean I have no you can't bench him after he's coming off 24 carries and nine catches but like I said earlier this Jacksonville offense is just not in my circle of trust right now I mean DJ Chark is a guy that I'm still playing no matter what but everyone else I have a lot of questions about and that also comes back to Leonard Fournette as well, and it doesn't help the fact that he is playing a run defense that is still ranked number one in football outsiders DVOA. We know that the Tampa Bay can stop the run. They sell out to stop the run. I think that's going to be problematic for Leonard Fournette, especially if that Bucks offense can get over on the Jaguars defense, which has been awful really of late then that's gonna put them in trailing situations where you're hoping for like that seven catch four from Leonard Fournette. I just don't see it coming in this one with the Jacksonville offense that I just have way too many questions about. Thank you very much, guys. Time to head into our first over under. We take a player and a stat and our experts decide whether they'll go over or under that total. And we start with Kyler Murray against the Rams this afternoon. I know he's listed as questionable, but he will likely play. And if he does, he's looking for his fourth straight game with two or more touchdown passes. But will he get three? The line is two and a half combined TDs. And we start with Andy. 
Yeah, I th I'm gonna take the over here. I think he's gonna do it. Uh, the hamstring issue is certainly a concern, uh, but you look at his recent history, he has eight touchdowns in his last three games, and two of those games have been against the Niners defense, so quality competition. He is still producing for fantasy owners. I think there's a really good spot for him against a Rams D that was just absolutely shamed, humiliated by Lamar Jackson. Uh, they have allowed four or more touchdowns three times already this season. I think Murray goes for three in this one. Tank? Yeah, so Mason Rudolph had 242 in the tub, and he's sitting on the pine now. Trubisky had a game full of ugliness and a tub against the Rams. So that means that you can get a touchdown against the Rams without even trying. So the real question is, <laughs> can Colin Murray get plus one and a half touchdowns? And after seeing what Lamar Jackson did against that defense with the invisible juice, hell yeah, he going over. Liz? I think you better break out the broom because this is a sweep. <laughs> I know that a regression to the mean is always possible, but if we look at how good Kyler Murray has been week over week, how his game is evolving, I have to give the advantage to him to be able to do this. And also the Rams have only allowed three quarterbacks more than two touchdowns so far this season. One of them was Jameis Winston. We're just going to wipe that from the books. The other one is uh, uh, Russell Wilson and then Lamar Jackson. Obviously, opposing defenses are having trouble with these rushing quarterbacks, and Kyler Murray is averaging nearly one red zone rushing attempt per, per week, and he's also getting it done through the air. He has the second most, uh, second most money throws on the season, so I do think he can go over this line. Jameis is offended. He's a rushing quarterback, too. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say. All right, thank you, guys. Well, let's help a few of our viewers out with some roster questions. We are sending Andy and Tank over to the monitor. Guys, it's time for Make Your Pick. Oh, and we got a bunch of my cousins We got an this. abundance of Williamses. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, Kainzval needs three flexes. It's a full PPR. We got the dueling Williamses over there. Emmanuel Sanders, who it's, it feels like it's been a month since he's done anything at all. Yeah, and, and the Ravens got, defense is tough. Then we've got the two Rams receivers who aren't Cooper Cup, uh, yeah. the one guy that we've been able to trust until very recently. Will you play two Rams? I can't go to the two Ram formation, not the way they've been rolling. I think I prefer Brandon Cooks's uh, touchdown upside in this one. I'm gonna go with him. I'm actually gonna go with both of your cousins in this one. Oh! I like Daryl Williams to see something more than 50% of the snaps for Kansas City. I think he's in a great spot. And then Jamal Williams against the Giants defense that has been bad against both the run and pass. I'm gonna go with him. I too. mean, yeah, you wanna entertain some of those other ones, but it's always a safer play when you go with the running backs and the flex. Yep, absolutely. You do it, you do it. There we go. Okay, Jordan. Jordan, uh, finally, somebody who needs just one. One simple solution. It's James White. Uh, who's been curiously quiet all year. You made a really. good point. We haven't seen a James White game since 2018. Hadn't happened. Hadn't yeah. happened this year. Uh, what they're saving him for, I don't know. We've got Alshon Jeffrey coming back from injury. We've got Christian Kirk, who's been a pretty good start all year. Who has the highest touchdown probability. You're right. It's Alshon. It's Alshon. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to talk myself into Kirk earlier, but I think I got to go Alshon in this one. Uh, it's really all he does is catch touchdowns. Absolutely. Secrets agent? Secrets agent. Uh, needs one wide receiver and a flex. It's a half PPR. This is this is ridiculous. Right. Um, we should all we should all have your problems. DJ Chark. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Chark has to start every week. Chark is a top ten receiver moving Bucks. forward. It's a great matchup. He's a dominant player. And then I got to go Devontae Adams against that Giants defense that uh, uh, 8.6 yards per pass attempt on the season. Yeah, they about to smash today. These are all great options, too. I don't know who your tight end is that you can't play right. Hunter Henry, but I got to go with these two. That one's easy for me. There we go. Wrap. All right. Thank there you is. very much, guys. We head down to L.A. now with Matt and Liz for our next quick slant. The Rams are in Arizona to face the Cardinals, and both teams are struggling a bit. Now, the Rams are coming off an ugly loss to Baltimore, and the Cardinals have lost four in a row, but they did get some extra rest with their bye last week. So, guys, what are we expecting in this one? You know what? The Rams are coming off ugly losses. Fine. Enough. We hear it. But you know what is working for the Rams offense? At least not, maybe not working, but looking better is Todd Gurley. 
He is coming off a game in which he was on the field for his highest snap share so far of the season. He is not back to, you know, 2017 or 2018 version of himself, but there are a few runs here and there that are explosive where he is getting yards after contact. So I am maybe a little bit more optimistic about his ability to get going and therefore maybe since he is the engine of the team, Matt, I don't know if that's something you've ever heard before, no. get the whole offense moving. You know, it's funny too, uh, Liz, we haven't seen each other since Tuesday at this point. Yeah. So this is going to be the first time that you hear me reference that I wrote a column that came out on Friday Woo. about this LA Rams team and just the direction that they are headed right now. And Gurley was one of the main talking points, which is just, you know, I think Sean McVay has kind of been put in a bad spot with this player that he has to almost like take the punches every week about his workload, which is super inconsistent because this game that he's coming off of where he played all these snaps, he just ran the ball six times, caught three balls for Zero negative three tackles. yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, he did but, catch all three of his targets, Matt. Yeah, There's no, but passing then, game floor here. But then the week before, yeah. I mean, he was an, like from a workload perspective, he was awesome. He was over 20 carries. He had his high, one of his best receiving games of the year. So I think that's kind of the game we're going to see from him here because there's been no week-to-week -week consistency with the workload, good but good matchup, and I still like the way that McVay adjusted and went with the power running offensive line in that game. It was good enough to beat the Bears. Might be good enough to keep things consistent against the Cardinals. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. It's just wow. facts. Quick, quick before Happy we... Thanksgiving, Loza. Quick before we go. <laughs> what about the backfield on the other side? Chase Edmonds is back. I can't. No. Kenyon Drake yeah. is this... Look at Kenyon Drake. I mean, what world are we living in? What a glow-up for Kenyon Drake. Drake. David jo uh, David Jones. Uh, David Doesn't Johnson matter. relegated to the bench. Our colleague James Coe wouldn't even do a fearless forecast on him. The fearless forecast is nope, 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 nope. Brilliant work by Coe and our team in the control room. Uh, we do have to mention that Chase Ed Edmonds is back. So I don't know how these um, touches are going to be distributed, but I think after Drake has looked so good over the past few weeks, you have to reward him and he's going to stay the RB1. I'm going to put him in RB3 kind of flex territory, though, because of the addition of Edmonds. Yeah, I would really like to not mess around with any of these players, but I'd go, like you said, Drake, then pretty decent gap, Edmonds, and then, hey, you better have the whiskey already poured if you got to start David Johnson here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Another break for us here on FFL. Up next, we'll see which sleepers will cause some fantasy damage. Stay with us. Welcome back to Fantasy Football Live. Let's kick it over to Liz, who's standing by with some sleeper picks for us. This is a segment we call Fantasy Damage. Hello, Liz. Hello. Well, I wish we could do more damage with these picks, but we got to dig deep regardless. And listen, if you don't have to mess with Washington's backfield, 
then by no means should you. However, if you are desperate for a running back, maybe give Darius Geis a look. Yes, things will be muddied with Chris Thompson back, but Geis has outsnapped Adrian Peterson since his return two weeks ago. Also, I know the, the carry totals are about the same, but if you look at red zone rushing attempts, Geis has had five to Peterson's one. And I like the matchup here against the Panthers, a team that's allowing the fourth most fantasy points to uh, running backs, to opposing running backs, and also will be without their second best run stuffer, Don Terry Poe. So if you like a flex, if you need a flex, maybe you go with Geis. Let's move over to the wide receiver position. Now, I liked this pick more when I thought Mohamed Sanu and Philip Dorsett might be sitting, but I still think Nikhil Harry is interesting. He is, get ready for uh, the trope alert, he is a contested catch receiver, and we saw that bear out last week when he caught a touchdown 10 yards out from Tom Brady. Listen, Tom Brady needs a red zone threat, a traditional red zone threat to lift this whole passing offense. And even though Sanu is back, he's working with a high ankle sprain. And Philip Dorsett has been eh, up and down all season. He did clear the concussion protocol, but I think that Harry, especially given the matchup against the Houston secondary, which is totally flammable and has allowed 14 touchdowns to opposing wide receivers so far this season, could be lucky. The volume, absolutely suspect, but maybe you get a touchdown out of him. They gotta get some reps for the young guy heading into the postseason anyway. Finally, a tight end. Um, how is anyone not talking about Mo Alley Cox? Stop laughing. Stop laughing. <laughs> All right, so we know that there are problems in Indianapolis, right? T.Y. Hilton is out. There's no Eric Ebron. Jack the dad should be the beneficiary of all the damn targets. But Naheem Hines, sure, he's there, but he hasn't averaged more than, or he hasn't seen more than four targets over the past few weeks. So I'm not really putting a lot of trust in him. Mo Ali Cox should actually see a decent role. He's missed a lot of time with a thumb injury, but he is expected back this week. So again, we're throwing darts. You got one, you need one. Send one Mo Ali's way. Thank you very much, Liz. One of our favorite segments is back. Get excited. We head to Fantasy Woo! Court where justice is always served by the one and only Judge Andrew Barons. The floor is yours, sir. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, so I'm actually gonna take on a question this week that I received, I don't know, I probably received three or four different versions of this. I'm gonna go with the one that managed to confine it to one tweet and you spelled everything correctly. Uh, it's Chicken Hawk. <laughs> Chicken Hawk is asking, I'm in the playoffs, but thinking of playing my stiffs for seeding matchup, is that wrong? Uh, now, let me first say that I feel most leagues should have a playoff format in which the two best teams get buys, so you have to compete for those buys. I feel like your league ought to have a format in which the team that scores the most points over the full season gets some sort of payout. But if there are no such incentives for uh, competing all the way through the tape, then I think you gotta do what is in the best interest of your squad toward the goal of winning a championship. It's hard for me to say that you can't do this in a fantasy league when this is something that we see teams do in real life all the time. This is like an annual tradition in the NBA for teams to try to line up the best possible playoff path to the title. Uh, I think you can do this. In fact, I think, again, if there's no incentives for you to set a great lineup and you want to avoid a, a hot team in the first round of your fantasy playoff matchup, yes, I think this is a thing you can absolutely do. Go for it, Chicken Hawk. It's a little bit cowardly, uh, but if it results in a fantasy title, I'm all for it. You always keep it real. We appreciate that. Word. Thank you. <laughs> also, remember, if a last second play real. or a missed kick costs you your matchup this week, tell us about it. Just send a video to at Yahoo Fantasy. Make sure you use that hashtag FFLBadBeats, and Andy Barons will bring justice down upon you, whether you like it or not. All right, let's get a check of our social channels to see what kind of help you guys need. Matt and Liz, what's going on over there? Well, Liz, yeah. Ryan Sparkles... Uh, no, it's Sparks. I like Sparkles. sparkles. Uh, Ryan Sparkles from Facebook says there's not a peep in the house except him wondering if he should play your boy Ronald Jones or, my other or boy. your boy Mark Andrews. <laughs> I'll give you that one. Um, I am going to, you know what? It is the holidays and maybe uh, it, it, maybe there could be a Christmas. I'm Ronald Jones, all right? You did it to oh, me. You no. did it to me. I can't resist. I have been so good all season. He'll probably put some coal in my stocking, but I'm going back to him.
The matchup you said yourself was the best thing ever, and I don't have Mark Andrews projected for a touchdown this week. I have him projected for five catches and 58 yards. Yuck. Well, what would you do, Matt? <laughs> I would play Mark Andrews. Okay, well, fine. I don't play your mess, tight end. I don't want to mess around with that Tampa Bay backfield. Peyton Barber doesn't really go away. No, he sure doesn't. No, he does not. Uh, but, hey. It is the holiday spirit. You're so feeling so, giving. I'm so glad we helped you, Ryan. Yeah, you feel, because you're we gave feeling you a giving. Decision. I mean, Liz actually made some good points, and I sat here with my mouth agape like a jackass. So in the end, I think maybe he goes with your side here. Anyways, let's keep moving. Some more uh, questions from our chat room here. We've got John with a flex question with a lot of flexing emojis. Very clever. Oh. Melvin Gordon, DK Metcalf, Jamal Williams, Will Fuller, Terry McLaurin, or Kirtland so Sutton. Many. Oh, my God. There's so many options. Um, I like. I do like Melvin Gordon. Though here in this one, I think Brad was right on when he had when we, they talked a quick slants a little bit earlier. I think Melvin Gordon has a guaranteed volume, mm -hmm. so I like that one. Um, also, no Von Miller, not that that really affects Gordon so much. Um, and I think the right tackle should be back in this one as well. So Gordon should be at least better matchup wise and in terms of protection. Yeah, I think so. Like like we said, this is the most secure volume and a pretty secure matchup. And if I, look, I, I know Drew Locke is uh, another one of your guys. Um, um, <laughs> he is a fantastic quarterback that has yet to be discovered and has only been missil mal misaligned because he's had numerous offensive coordinators over his college career and also a head coach who, like, is far from the uplifting type. Uh, certainly not. Uh, I Let's don't, give him the thumbs up. I think he's going to be uh, lifted up into the ground with a lot of sacks here. Oh, I the think gonna uh, the L.A. Chargers will be controlling this game for once in their lives, and I think that's going to be a lot of opportunity for Melvin Gordon. That's the way I'd go here. Yes. Let's take one last one. Uh, we'll stick with a, a Denver Broncos question here. I cannot recognize this Twitter handle, but they've got a lot of uh, flexing emojis here. Sony Michelle or Cortland Sutton? Wow. I've got a lot of Cortland Sutton questions. It makes me a little nervous. I'm going to go Sony, Sony Michelle, Michelle too. Absolutely. I think Sony Michelle, he's also only $17 in our daily game. I think he has a good game. I totally agree. And I think we're going to talk a lot more about that in our yeah. care, don't care segment. So keep it tuned for that. But I, I'm going to go Sony Michelle here. Keep hitting up the chat room with a lot of, look, we've obviously had a lot of fun people so far. Keep being fun. Keep being different. Keep being entertaining. And we might just answer your fantasy question. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right, it is quick slant time again, and this time we're talking Giants and Packers. Now, Green Bay needs a win here to right the ship after getting demolished on Monday Night Football. And for the Giants, they're 2-9, and nine, so they're just in it to ruin playoff hopes at this point. <laughs> um, do we think Rodgers and Co. can get it done today? We do. So Brad talked about the weather earlier. We have to take that into account. And I already talked about the secret recipe between Rodgers and Devontae Adams, so I think we already covered that, too. We did already cover that. Uh, this Green Bay defense, not very good. Green Bay allowing 4.8 yards per carry to opposing rushers, 8.2 yards per pass attempt. Any elements? We of haven't the seen a good. We haven't seen a good Saquon since 2018 either, though. Oh, no, we haven't. Saquon um, probably still dealing with the after effects of yeah. that high ankle sprain. Has not looked himself. Uh, I think he's still obviously a top 12 play at the position this week. Uh, Brad, any anything on the Giants side you're interested in? Yeah, I'm actually interested in Darius Slayton, uh, to yeah. be honest with you. You know, he sticks out like a sore thumb in terms of, uh, you know, his targets inside the red zone and has really been on the same page with Daniel Jones in that capacity. Look, this game could get lopsided in a hurry if Aaron Rodgers and company are firing at all cylinders. You get a heavy dose of Aaron Jones, which I anticipate will occur in this contest. But Slayton's a guy that I think has got considerable potential to cross the chalk uh, along with maybe 70 plus yards. You know, Green Bay has been inside the top third and fewest fancy points, a lot of wide receivers, uh, but he could have some sneaky good fantasy appeal in 12 team and deeper leagues in the wide receiver three, especially with Golden Tate sideline due to that concussion. Yeah, Slayton is a guy who is actually available in about 70% of Yahoo leagues. You can still go out and grab him. I thought it was a really great sign uh, last time out that he was heavily targeted even with Golden Tate in the game. And Green Bay defense gives up the third, third most points to fantasy tight end. So reverse Stanford jinx. There it is. Caden Smith, <laughs> run him back. We're waiting for Stanford. A Stanford drop at some point. We got it. All right, thanks, guys. It is time now for Brad Evans to give us his gambling advice. And today it's a little different since he's not physically here. But nonetheless, Brad, take it away and fade the noise, friend. Yeah, we got to boost the bottom line so we can get all those Cyber Monday deals. So let's get out there and make some <laughs> moolah today uh, on the gambling gridiron. Let's start off with a matchup uh, this afternoon between the LA Rams and the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals catching two and a half in this game. 52 
5% right now. The public spread tickets on the Desert Birds, and that's where I'm leaning as well. Arizona's been a covering machine here of late. 5-1-1 one, and one, the last seven against the spread. You look at the Rams, they are also 5-1 and one ATS in their last six contests. But Jared Goff sucks, folks. Number 34 to just a completion percentage on the season. I think this Arizona front line, a little bit better than advertised. I like the Cardinals straight up. You know, screw the points. Give me them on the money line at plus 120. I think that is the smart wager of the day. They win this game outright, even with a ding to Kyler Murray under center in that bulky hamstring. Let's go to New England and Houston. Uh, the Patriots dried out from that sog of a game last week against... Uh, the Dallas Cowboys and the over under in this game uh, currently sitting at 44 and a half, but at plus 120 on the under 51% of the public spread tickets on the under. Now, some locations outside of BetMGM had the total as high as 46 and a half. So do some shopping, obviously, here, but I'm taking the under regardless of the number. Great value on the BetMGM app again at plus 120. New England's been under in four of its last five games. Houston also under in four of its last five contests as well. I disagree with what Loza and Harmon said about Deshaun Watson. I think he's going to be under incredible duress this entire game, knowing how rickety that offensive line has been for the Houston Texans. And it's going to play perfectly in the hands of the Patriots. This game is going to be a slog in terms of scoring. So again, under is the play there. Minnesota and Seattle. Seahawks laying two and a half. Heavy juice here at minus 121. If you're going to lay the points on this contest, but I, I think that's the way you got to side. Uh, look, the public right now, 62% of those spread tickets hammering the Hawks at home. Seattle 4-2 and two against the spread of the last six, but just 1-5 in five ATS are the Seahawks in their last six home contests. Minnesota, though, 1-4 in four ATS in its last five visits to the great Northwest. I think Seattle wins by a field goal in this one, so give me the Hawks. Minus the two and a half. And let's insert a player prop here. We talked about this earlier on in the broadcast about Josh Jacobs. It's 78 and a half rush yards. Look, this is a delightful, this is an arousing matchup uh, on paper as Kansas City has allowed the most fantasy points to running back position. They're giving up five yards per carry, 121.6 rush yards per game. This is just 78 and a half. He obliterated this earlier this season. He rushed for 99 yards in the first matchup back in week two. I know that was eons ago, but as long as Oakland can remain competitive for two and a half quarters in this game, I think Jacobs races past this number. So I'm taking the over on this one. Jacobs forcing a missed tackle 30.3% of the time and a 3.56 yak per attempt. He has delivered on all fronts this season and building up on that August hype. So definitely take the over on Jacobs. Now go out there and make that money. Thank you, Brad. It's time now to hit the phone lines for some play calling. Now, remember, the number to call is 877-FFL-GURU. First up, we have our good friend Dave in Wisconsin. Good morning, Dave. What's your question? All right. Um, my question is, it's a half PPR league. I have three players. I can only play two of them. So one of these three has to sit. The choices are running back Chris Carson, Wide receiver Keenan Allen, wide receiver Devontae Parker. Hmm. Ooh, so we got a half PPR format. Um, Parker's volume has just been so locked in. Yeah, uh, he's a given. Perhaps a difficult matchup for Keenan Allen. Do you, this comes down to me. Do you trust Chris Carson? Uh, he's fumbled seven times. I see. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna talk about we Rashad are, Penny and Chris Carson here in a little bit, but. I don't believe coaches, so I don't think Chris Carson is going to continue to get that volume. So I'll yeah. probably go to two wide receivers. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the two wide receivers, both of whom have seen significant volume. Okay. Next up, we have Keith in France. Good morning, Keith. How can we help? Oh, hey. Good morning. Oh, oh, Good oh, noise. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I feel so honored to have been on hold with Dave from Wisconsin. I know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a legend. Yeah. So uh, I've got a flex and I've got a wide receiver uh, currently filled with Eckler and OBJ, but I have Adam Thielen and Benny Snell on the bench. Should I uh, make a change? Hmm. Brad, do you want to take this? Yeah, look, uh, I don't adhere to the always start your studs theory. And look, let's be honest, OBJ doesn't qualify for uh, such a designation anyway. I like Benny Snell, to be honest with you, to go along with Eckler. I think Eckler is the best of the bunch here. I mean, Adam Thielen has been practicing this week, but you worry about the hamstring injury, does it flare up? 
then you can throw it on Seattle. But Snell's got a very safe floor in my estimation. And look, uh, this is pleasing uh, Liz Lowe's ear when I say this because she has been beating that Benny Snell drum uh, going back to the NFL draft. Look, he was an impressive college player at Kentucky. He's a battering ram. Doesn't have a whole lot of wiggle, but he has got a lot of straight line power, and the yak numbers uh, back that up. And you got to love the matchup, too, going against that Cleveland front, giving up 4.6 yards per carry. So I think there's a good shot there for 80, 90 yards and a possible touchdown. Yeah, I, I like that call on Snell. He, he carried the ball 21 times yeah. in their last game. Like, I got that totally wrong. I thought it was going to be Jalen Samuels, uh, but it was all Snell. I see no reason why they wouldn't go back to that. Okay. Agreed. Thank you so much for calling in. We really appreciate it. Another commercial break for us. Up next, as we mentioned, we are going over or under on a Seahawks running back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Fantasy Football Live here in week 13. It's time now to get into another over under. Seattle running back Rashad Penny is coming off a career high 129 yard performance against the Eagles, including that unforgettable 58 yard explosion for a touchdown. Now, Chris Carson's fumbling problem seems to have resurfaced. So, what do we think Penny's touch count will be on Monday night against the Vikings? We'll set the line at 14 and a half. And Brad, we'll start with you. What do you think? I'm going to take the over here. Look, this would also set a new career high for Rashad Penny in terms of touches in a single contest. Uh, he had 14 last week. You mentioned the yardage in, uh, in terms of his overall output. But look, even in limited doses this season, he's been very impressive between the tackles, very similar in style and substance to what he brings to the table as Chris Carson. 3.36. Yards after contact per attempt is what the sophomore back has logged. Minnesota, difficult matchup, 4.1 yards per carry, and the seven fewest fantasy points allowed to the running back position. But I think uh, Penny just creeps over this number in what will be a close to 50-50 split with the incumbent and somebody, Penny, who I trust will be a back-end RB2 and 12-team and deeper lead. Tank? Uh, I'm going with the over on Penny. I have to do it. Because, you know, who lies? Like, if you exclude the president and the politicians that <laughs> lie for the president, who lies more than NFL coaches? Nobody. And so Sean Hammond saying that, you know, they're going to stick to their regular running back rotation, meaning that Chris Carson is going to continue to get his regular volume? Nah, dude. Like, Rashad Penny is the number one pick. GMs love to justify their high draft choices. And with him playing as well as he did against Philly, who's known to have a really good defense, they're going to continue to roll that hot hand till the wheels fall off. Over. Matt, you don't seem convinced. There is no <laughs> way I am going with a sweep here on Rashad Penny 
to send a career high in, in carries? No, th no, thank you. Look, we can say that the Seahawks lie about their running backs, which, sure, they, they, they are a little less than truthful at times. But they've been honest about Chris Carson <laughs> since, I don't know, the offseason when they said he was going to be more involved in the passing game and they said he was going to be the guy. And he was, in fact, more involved in the passing game and was the guy. And also, it's not even like this is a great matchup against Minnesota, which has a pretty good run-stopping front seven. So you can give me the under here on this one. No, thank you. I am not clean sweeping with a Rashad Penny over <laughs> under. Give me a break. All right, Matt. Well, we will give you a break. We're going to highlight some <laughs> wide receivers, and Matt Harmon has a couple he likes and dislikes, so we'll give him the floor. Hello again, Matt. Well, hey, it's been a while. Nice to talk to you again, Amanda. Uh, so my number one pick for the guy I like here this week is Cooper Cup. And I know he has fallen way out of the circle of trust for fantasy managers. And I get it. It has been a slog. He has caught nine passes for 88 yards over his last three games. That is brutal for a guy that you considered one of the most trustworthy players in fantasy. But I see him getting off the schneid here. I see him really crushing it against the Cardinals. We know that they are very bad at defending the tight ends. We get it. That has been spoken of all season, and it is very true. But they're just generally bad at defending the middle of the field. When you combine tight ends and slot receivers, they allow a league high in catches, 179. They also allow a league high in touchdowns and yards. They can't cover tight ends. They can't cover slot receivers. Cooper Cup is sort of a hybrid between the two. I see him getting rolling here if Jared Goff can just be a little stable, and I think that's going to happen against the Cardinals. Now, for a player that I don't like, it's Tyrell Williams, who has been touchdown free for quite some time after being one of the most prolific scorers early in the season. And it's pretty similar logic to a player that I had in this segment several weeks ago, which was Mike Williams against this same Kansas City Chiefs defense. It's because, look, if the Chiefs are going to lose here, if the Raiders are going to win this game, they're going to have to establish the run with Josh Jacobs. That is going to take the ball out of the air. And we saw the Chargers had a pretty difficult time doing that. They were scored on quickly. They were able to take away the running game where the Chiefs, you know, it was good in terms of yards per carry, but it was not good in terms of bottom line fantasy. But even then, if you're going to have to throw the ball against the Chiefs, this secondary is pretty good. No cornerback in the Chiefs secondary is allowing a completion rate over 55%. So I'm not going to go with a volatile, deep threat guy that needs a lot of big plays to make it happen for your fantasy team. Don't really like Tyrell Williams this week. Thank you very much, Matt. It is time now for Tank to hop. Literally, he just hopped <laughs> um, over to the monitor to give us his daily fantasy advice. I know I can use plenty of DFS assistance, so please. Yeah, I can use a lot of assistance, too, trying to catch up <laughs> with Rev. It's been tough sledding this year. But I'm going with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback because, look at it, the Houston Texans are playing the New England Patriots, so the, the Colts are, like, one game behind. They're trying to play catch-up. Not the best matchup against the Titans, but Ryan Tannehill in that offense has been scoring a lot of points. He's super cheap. He's 23 bucks, And, you know, the coach loves to throw the ball more in Indianapolis than on the road. So I think he's a really good play. There's another guy who's cheaper, Andy Dalton, a.k.a. the Ginger Fist, Ooh. coming back with a really good matchup against the Jets. But, you know, you have to play around with that Ginger Fist. So tread lightly. Tread at your own risk. Now, at running back. Kenyon Drake, I mean, dang, started from the bottom, now we here. Like, this dude was in Miami, not getting much love, not getting much touchdowns, and then he goes to the Arizona Cardinals defense, and then he's like, no new friends. He has DJ <laughs> regulated to the bench, where that's all he has is views from the bench. Volume monster, really good matchup against the Rams, and he's super cheap. He's at 17 bucks, so get him in your lineup. At wide receiver, I'm going with the guy that we've already talked about, Darius Slayton. Like I said, I expect the pack to come up in here and smack the Giants around, coming off that beatdown against San Francisco. You have no Evan Ingram. You have no Golden Tate. He's super cheap. He's been a volume monster, a high target in the red zone. My man from Stanford, Caden Smith, got the tub last week, so I'm expecting him to come back and bounce back with a big performance this week. At tight end, Jack Doyle. Eric Ebron is on the shelf right now. No T.Y. Hilton. I already said that Brissett and that offense, they love to throw the ball around a lot in the dome. Jack Doyle was that guy that we all loved a couple years ago, and he's super cheap at 13 bucks. And just tell me, who in the hell else does Brissett have to throw the ball to? Nobody. So get Doyle in your lineup. And that defense, we're going with the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, the Chiefs are coming off a bye. The Raiders just got smacked by the Jets. 
and they're playing against the Raiders, and they're coming off a bye, who just got smacked by the Jets. <laughs> 13 bucks. There you go. All right. Well, let's take a look at our season long guru challenge. Yeah, standings. let's. I actually. <laughs> my favorite that. part of the show. I everybody. dread this part of the show. Um, <laughs> Matt and Liz went one and two in week 12. And Andy, your lead is dwindling. Dwindle. Oh, look at that. 107 points. That's okay. a commanding lead. Okay, I don't know. Fine. Lizzie coming for you. Um, I know it ain't me. Uh, it's Matt a corny. has jumped tank. <laughs> <laughs> Matt and Liz, would you guys, uh, do you have anything to say? The surging Matt Harmon, wow. I know, look at that. I mean, look, this is this is my time. This is my <laughs> time of the year when I nah. come back, nah. make it happen. Uh, I'm not saying I'm coming back for first place, but I'm getting out of the basement. I'm on the come up here. And it's mostly because, uh, just like I did this week, I set my lineup like five minutes ago uh, during Listen, the break. Matt <laughs> thinks he's like the Derrick Henry of the back quarter of a season. It is not the case. Andy, oh. I'm just trying to be respectable we all know that the rev is going to finish number one and second Brad. place is really just first loser brad are you feeling okay uh, i'm just saving for the basement as normal yeah yeah <laughs> i'm in the basement too i'm gonna need some blankets so. i may be in the basement after my lineup this week <laughs> <It's cold Trust. laughs> all right it is quick slant time again in a sunday night football showdown the houston texans host the patriots new england is 10 and 1 after a big win over dallas last week and the texans currently lead the afc south now golden tate is the only receiver to go for over 15 fantasy points against the patriots secondary so matt and liz should we just bench any houston receiver going up against new england is that how we should do this no. No? I don't think you can do it. No, I mean, I, I think it's fair to worry. Absolutely, you're right. But, like, this passing game, what's so great about it is that it is pretty highly concentrated. Like, we have seen, obviously, Kenny Stills. Kiki Kute was a person that we once believed was real, no sure. longer. Duke Johnson had some moments. <laughs> oh, Duke Johnson, he had some. I mean, and don't forget moments. Darren Fells, like yeah. two receptions, and one Aikens. at the end zone week after week. Now, so maybe we're like talking over our point here, but the point here <laughs> is that when it's Fuller and Hopkins on the field, that's really where Watson's looking. Yeah. And I still like the fact that they can concentrate the targets between these two. And of course, yes, Stefan Gilmore is amazing. I'm, I'm interested to see who he shadows here. And if like last week, it it's didn't, likely to be new. It didn't really go to our expectations last week because last week we expected, oh, he Mario. might go with Gallup and then he'll bracket, you know, and that yeah. didn't happen. That's Hey, that's Bill Belichick for you. But at the end of the day, I think that this receiving group is as hard to, to defend as anyone in the league, as you mentioned earlier, when Will Fuller's out there. So I'm not downgrading expectations there. I think Will Fuller is a wide receiver three. We'll talk about um, Nuke in over under a little bit later, but I also think we talked, we hinted at it, and I don't want to get too much into it, but Sony Michelle is someone that I think we both like a lot because as much as the Houston run defense, if you look at their stats overall in the season, my goodness, they're great. But over the past two weeks, uh, not so much. And we know that secondary is problematic. So I think if you're taking flyers on people like Nikhil Harry yes. or Jacoby Myers even, yes. who was more used Jacoby last week. Jacoby Myers, like a better route runner, uh, uh, more polished, but again, just doesn't have the touchdown upside, which is why as much as I like a, a, an under dog have to give the advantage to Harry. Yeah, I mean, I've heard he's pretty good at contested situations. I mean, does but, he could, does he win those contested situations? Like, win those 50-50s, I heard? Some would say... Is he a big body in the red area of the field for an aging quarterback who might need one? Some would say that 50-50 uh, balls become maybe 60-40 balls with Ooh. old Nikhil Harry. Nailed it. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. With that, it's time for another break right here on Fantasy Football Live. Now, when we come back, we'll get to some of your questions, so hang tight.
Welcome back to FFL. Now, as we get even closer to kickoff here in week 13, let's check in with Matt and Liz to get some social questions answered for you guys. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Liz, got a little tight end debate, and I know that is your specialty here. Uh, Ismael from Facebook wants to know, Noah Fant or Jack Doyle? Oh, this one's easy. Okay, take it away. Yeah, give me Jack Doyle because of the volume, and also no one has mentioned yet on this program that Derwin James is going to be starting for the Chargers, and he is an electric safety, so I expect Noah Fant to He'd be even more spooked than usual in, <laughs> That's a in week 13. That is a great point. Uh, that is a, a spooked player for sure. Let's take another one here. Brian from Facebook says, Sterling Shepard, Christian Kirk, Tyler Boyd, or DK Metcalf needs two for a flex. And we got Christmas trees and dinner plates. Okay. I tell you what, I think this you is You tell me what. Too. This is Sterling, Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard and Tyler, and Tyler Boyd. Boyd. Yeah, I mean, Tyler Boyd's coming off a great game, uh, obviously. They're both going to eat, thanks for those dinner points, because of the volume that they will see. I love that. Two slot receivers for you there. Uh, remember, keep it here all day. We've got two halftime shows coming up later as well during the early games and late games where we will be taking all of your fantasy questions, concerns, and mostly comments. And don't forget to use the hashtag AskFFL. Because I'll forget to even reference it at any point. <laughs> Every week. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Let's get to our final over-under for the week. We touched on this game before the break, but we're going to look specifically at DeAndre Hopkins against the Patriots tonight. Nuke has hauled in at least six catches in his last seven games, dating all the way back to week five. So the question is, can he put up the same number tonight against a secondary with the lowest completion percentage to opposing offenses? We'll set the line at six and a half receptions. Andy, start us off. Yeah, terrific matchup. Uh, very much excited for it. I'm a little nervous as somebody who owns Hopkins in several leagues. Only one receiver has reached this total against New England this year, and it's the great Cole Beasley. Only three other guys have even six catches against New England. Obviously, that they've been great. One of the things we love about Hopkins, though, from a fantasy perspective, is just consistent volume regardless of matchup, regardless of the opposing corner. Deshaun Watson looks his way. He's seen at least 10 targets in five of his last six games, averaging 10 targets per game on the season. I don't think this is necessarily gonna be a great game for him, but seven for 70 yards, yeah, I think he can do that. I'll take the over. Brad? Look, I'm uh, going to take the under here. I, I don't trust anything about this matchup. I mean, Stephon Gilmore, I understand that Jason McCourty is out, and that's a major downgrade for the New England Patriots and their prowess in that secondary, but I think Gilmore is going to shadow Hopkins exclusively. And this season, he has given up a 37.4 passer rating, 0.92 yards per snap, and a 45.4 catch percentage. I love D-Hop. I know he's averaging well north of this number on the season on a per-game basis. But this has got like four or five catches for maybe 50 yards, no touchdown written all over it. And I'm also concerned about that offensive line and everything and the kitchen sink that Belichick is going to bring at Deshaun Watson. Liz? Yeah, I'm going to go under on this one. I know that Nuke is an incredible receiver. And yes, under Stephon Gilmore's coverage, he did manage to surpass this line twice. Once in 2017 with seven catches and 76 yards and once last year with eight catches and 78 yards. Do you want to know what those two matchups have and had in common? No Will Fuller on the field either of those games. Ain't happening this week, guys. Set your expectations. I'm sorry. This is going to be an incredible matchup to watch. Get your popcorn ready, but don't get your popcorn ready if you're expecting for Nuke to go off because it's just not happening. It also Gilmore is playing lights out this season. He hasn't allowed a player to go over six catches yet this season. I think he keeps the ball rolling under. All right, thank you very much, guys. We spent a lot of time today on things we do care about, but there are some things that Matt and Liz just don't care about. So guys, what are you not paying attention to today? This is the time of the year where I start to not care about season-long numbers. You know, this is when things are important to mm. pay attention to what's been going on lately. You, know, you might be going with this one. And where I am going, it's actually a couple of places. First, of course, the Houston Texans defense, I think we have to give, you mentioned this earlier, we got to let go of our season-long numbers for this defense, because not only do they get shredded through the air, they're starting to fall apart as a run defense too, which is going to happen when you're banged up all over the place, especially when you're missing a transformative talent like 
JJ Watt. Now, that brings me to my main point, which is Sony Michelle is a player that I really like this week because mm -hmm. I think the tides are starting to turn in that New England backfield, mostly to him. We saw this, frankly, we saw this last playoff season too, fantasy playoffs and regular season playoffs too. This is when they start to run the ball a little more, and especially with Isaiah Wynn back and hopefully Marcus Cannon being a little bit more yep. healthy this week, that offensive line is going to come together. I think they really look to establish the run. As Tom Brady has said, they're a complimentary offense to their great defense right now, and I think that's going to lead to more running and less passing for the Hall of Fame quarterback. I think those are great points all around. I don't care about Tom Brady's stats. Just oh. don't care. You know what? Yeah, I, I know he's uh, only the wait. Well, he's only had four top ten fantasy finishes all season. He's the FFQB 13 overall. That's great. That's great. We know he admitted that it's a problem. What I do care about though is the distribution of targets because this is a squad that has moved their wide receiver core all around. The Antonio Brown uh, experiment in Week One, well, that didn't quite work out. Josh Gordon was released. Mohamed Sanu was acquired. Philip Dorsett became a thing for a second until. I don't know if he's even going to keep his job, frankly. So now we've got Nikhil Harry and Jacoby Myers. We've talked about them throughout the program. Uh, if you haven't caught it, Nikhil program. Harry has this contested catchability. And Jacoby Myers is the precise, precise route runner who's a little bit more polished. So I want to see, listen, Belichick is going to have to get these guys um, some reps heading into the postseason because we know the Patriots are going to be playing into the postseason. So I want to see starting now, after Thanksgiving, when real football begins, how Tom Brady decides to divvy out his targets. I like it. Thanks, guys. Time for some more roster decisions over at the wall. Andy and Tank are over there to help make your pick, guys. What's going on? Uh, Pat's got an issue. He needs one flex. I love it when they only need one. Uh, Let's get real scientific with this. Good option. Last here. names, Carson, Williams, <laughs> Woods, <laughs> Sutton, all right, you give the logic. Yeah, we're going back to your cousin. It's gotta be Jonathan Williams here. Uh, guaranteed volume in a matchup that shouldn't scare us off against Tennessee. Like, in a normal week, this is obviously Chris Carson, but seven, eight fumbles on the season, I'm, I'm out on Carson. The best last name in the business. There we go. Shocker. I, for one, am stunned. Uh, <laughs> we need two wide receivers for Danimal 28. Wow, there's 27 other Danimals. Uh, to half PPR league, we got Metcalf, Boyd, Thielen, Devontae, Parker. Do you have a Thielen? I don't have a Thielen. I can't trust him in this one. The last time we saw him return with this hamstring injury, he aggravated it, had to tap out of the game. For Featherstone me. from Unnecessary Roughness. I have no hands. <laughs> For me, this is going to be Devontae Parker. The volume has just been so consistent, and I'm going to go Tyler Boyd. With the return well. of the ginger fist. Return of the ginger fist. I love it. Um, thank goodness Andy Dalton is back. That's just good for America. There it is. Wow. <laughs> That's right. Not for NFL, for America. No, good for America. <laughs> All right, one more break for us. Don't go anywhere. Oh, man. <laughs> Future Bears quarterback Andy Dalton back in the mix. <laughs> and I order my...
Welcome back to FFL. Let's get one more check of our chat before we head out. Matt and Liz, anything good in the chat? Yeah, well, look, we had a really good uh, question here from Larry Turner on Facebook. Wants to know in a standard scoring league. That's key. It is key here. Benny Snell or Tevin Coleman? I am going to go with your guy. Yeah. Benny Snell in this spot. Cleveland is a non-move-the-needle defense for me, especially from a run defense perspective. I trust that the Steelers have remade their identity with old Duck Hodges and Benny Snell. Yo! More of a traditional power running team. 2019, baby. Look at that. Uh, so I actually have these players 26 and 27 back-to-back -back in my rankings, with Snell, of course, getting the edge, and given the standard scoring format, you know I'm in for Snell, Nug. Let's go. I love that. Yes, there you go, Larry. That's your answer. I saw you ask that question about 100 times, so I hope you're paying attention. Now, last question we'll do here is from G3Cap on Twitter. Nailed that one. Help. Need two PPR flex options here. Austin Eckler, Philip Lindsay, Sony Michelle, or Miles Sanders. A couple of players we talked about all game here, or all show here, all program, some would say. Program. Sony Michelle is one for me here. Yeah. And I think the other one is Miles Sanders. I think uh, you're gonna have to go that way. Philip Lindsay's tempting, no question about it. But I, I, at the end of the day, I do think that uh, you can trust Miles Sanders enough as an upside. It's also here. full point PPR. Yeah. So that leads me to the Sanders way as well. Yeah, that's a great point because Philip Lindsay's passing game role has kind of evaporated here with the, some of the quarterback turnover. Maybe it's different with Drew Locke, but that remains to be seen. Remember to keep coming back here all day. To at Yahoo Fantasy, we are going to be chopping it up here. Halftime shows for you people in the early game and the late game. Come by, hang out with us. We'll have a lot to say. Use that hashtag, AskFFL. Maybe. Thank you, guys. Before we say goodbye, we're going to say hello to a couple callers. So first up, we have Brian in Chicago. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, everyone. Um, got a half point future. I have a flex and wide receiver uh, to fill. Jamison Crowder. Christian Kirk, Alshon Jeffrey, or Sean McCoy. How many is an eight? Uh, two. Flex and a wide receiver. Oh, a flex and a wide receiver. Okay. Uh, Brad, would you like to take this one? Yeah, uh, first and foremost, uh, I'm going to go with Jamison Crowder out of that group uh, and a wide receiver. Like, uh, he's got a great matchup today in Cincinnati, for crying out loud. They're giving up 8.9 pass yards per attempt. Really good shot for him to get six to eight receptions, maybe north of 70 yards and find the end zone. And I'm going to go with Shady McCoy. I, I think McCoy and Daryl Williams are going to work in tandem, as we talked about earlier on the program. The Raiders have come unraveled in the trenches. 11th most fantasy points allowed at the running back position in the last five weeks. Good shot for him to get at least 55 total yards, and I think he finds the end zone as well. All right. Up next, we have Noel in Utah. Good morning. What's your question? Yeah, so I have a full PPR league, and I need to figure out who to play as quarterback. Jameis Winston, Kyler Murray, or Tom Brady? Hmm. Uh, tough one. Good thing we know it's PPR when it's quarterback question. Uh, I'm going to go Jameis Winston here uh, it, against a Jacksonville defense that just has not been able to stop anyone or anything lately. I mean, Jameis is a good play. I think Kyler Murray is a good play. And I know Tommy Boy hasn't been playing that well, but that's an amazing matchup against the Texans, too. So I really feel like you can't go wrong, but I'll probably lean Murray a little bit over Winston just because he protects the ball better. All right. Thank you, everyone, for calling in. We appreciate you each and every week. What did we miss? What are we most looking forward to today? We covered a lot, but let's start with Liz and Matt and get some final thoughts. Hey, guys. Final thoughts, I'll let you start. Um, you know what, I'm interested to see what Carson Wentz does this week. He has been playing in inclement conditions over the past two weeks. His O-line has been banged up. I believe Lane Johnson is healthy in this one. So I let, and he has uh, Alshon Jeffrey back and Nelson Aguilar back, what, for whatever that's worth. Um, so I, I am interested to see if he can take a bit of a step forward or back to where we thought he could be. So I'll keep a close eye on his play this week. Yeah, I wrote about in one of my pieces. Oh, uh, you wrote about someone in a piece that you're going to reference? Shocking, but actually a different <laughs> a different one. Uh, not the same one I referenced earlier. But I asked if the Eagles can go full Browns against this Dolphins team um, because the Browns are actually riding a lot of momentum right now. Mm -hmm. They've won their last three games, which is great. Uh, this offense is starting to kind of come together. But this is a brutal matchup against the Steelers' defense. I want to see if this a little, offense... A little bit of a narrative kind of... There's some, some narratives going on here. A lot of t-shirts by the way you were on Twitter earlier t-shirt after t-shirt uh, like just the designers are on fire at this point but 
I want to see if this Browns offense can remain on fire because they've really simplified things to being just Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham, and the two running backs, and Baker Mayfield's performance has stabilized because of it. So I want to see if they can keep that up against a defense that's actually good and not a cream puff like they played last week in Miami. Good stuff, guys. Thank you very much. Brad, what did we miss? Yeah, real quick. Look, I cannot wait to see the anguished face of John L.A. as he watches Drew Locke and the train wreck that he is going to be today against the L.A. Chargers. That's what I'm looking forward to most. Okay. Do you agree? Is there anything else? I, I just got to underscore what Liz said. I'm really interested to see what Carson Wentz can do with a full complement of weapons. Zach Ertz going to be active today. Uh, he's got everybody back, so no excuses. I just want to see if Lamar Jackson can unleash the invisible juice against that 49ers defense. And if he does, if people on the social media still find a way to hate on him. That's going to be a good <laughs> yeah. one. Also, we didn't cover Titans Colts today. Anything exciting about that matchup that we need to talk about? Jack AJ Doyle. Brown. <laughs> AJ oh, Brown. Doyle rules. AJ Brown, is that who you're screaming over there, Brad? AJ Brown, baby, all day. <laughs> Could be the last stand also, for Jonathan Williams before uh, Marlon Mack expected back in week 14. Okay, that's true. And Ryan Tannehill, does that anyone? I am moderately excited Are about you? Ryan yeah. Tannehill. Yeah, these last five okay. starts, 9.2 yards per pass attempt. All right, we'll keep our eyes open. Thank you so much for watching. That will do it for us, for all of us here in Sunnyvale and also LA. Thank you so much for watching. Best of luck to your fantasy team this week. We'll see you next week, 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 Pacific, right here on Yahoo Sports. Give it to us, oh, Rev. There, there it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know expectations are different. <laughs> <laughs>